Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michiel Smit. I'm a Projects and Communication Officer at EXA. Uh, for those who are less familiar with us, uh, EXA stands for the European Composer and Songwriter Alliance. Uh, and our main objective is to defend and promote the rights of music authors. Uh, and today we organize this Capacity Triangle webinar about the needs of the Ukrainian cultural sector. Uh, and this is a program supported by Creative Europe. Um, before we start, I would also like to mention that this webinar will be recorded. Um, and our moderator for today will be Zara Mani. Uh, Zara is a composer and a musician based in Austria. Uh, she is a representative of the Austrian Composers Association, and she is also vice president of EXA. Uh, Zara, thanks a lot for, for being here with us today, and uh, I'm very pleased to, to hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Mahil, and thank you for the introductions. So we can move on. Um, I'd like to thank you all for being here with us today. I'm here to facilitate the conversation and um, introduce everyone. I'm going to try and keep my contribution as brief as possible because there's a lot of valuable input and that's what we're here to hear. Briefly, today is the 293rd day since Russia launched its brutal attack against the Ukraine on the 24th of February this year. It's a date that none of us are going to forget. There's so much to talk about that I think it's important to say that today's one and a half hour session really requires focus from all of us because we're here to talk about the concrete needs of the cultural sector in the Ukraine. What's been done to date, which is very valuable, and what we can all do to help. Of course, arts and culture in the Ukraine have been profoundly affected, as has every level of civil society. Cultural infrastructure has been destroyed, like we saw at the very beginning with the bombing of theatres. Um, funding in the arts is obviously extremely minimal at a time like this. And it's also clear that a huge amount of people are leaving the country in the face of blackouts, freezing temperatures, and the pure um, brutality of the war itself. So today's session from our side is an expression of excess solidarity with the Ukraine. Our capacity triangles, which happen twice a year, as far as I know, are intended basically to as a communicative and skill building exercise with a view to what participants can learn in the scope of everything that EXA does. So our goal today is to listen to the speakers who've been so kind as to join us today, to the representatives from the field, and then to discuss together, time permitting, and learn about what we each individually and collectively can do to help not just rebuild the cultural sector, in the Ukraine, but also to create a sustainable and really lasting and ongoing space for Ukrainian cre creators in the broader European landscape. I think we're all convinced that music and culture can and do help to keep and to build peace. Just before I pass over the word, I'd like to give you a brief overview of what's going to happen in the next hour and a half. Um, we're going to start with Lyudmila Timbal from the Ukrainian Authors Organization, and then hear a presentation by Mikola Lysenko, who's joined us from Kiev, and Lutz Leukert from Germany, who've um, created a very powerful music initiative in support of the UK, Ukraine. After that, I'm pleased to welcome Juliana Ott from the European Commission and Alejandro Ramilo from the EACER, who are going to tell us about European um, funding and support initiatives for, for the Ukraine um, from a European level. And finally, Anna Klimchak from Zykes, um, who's going to tell us about the Polish initiatives that have been happening from the very beginning, um, just as an example, but we'll come back to you later on the outset of the war. I think all, already in February 2020, the Polish composers um, sent 50 pairs of walkie-talkies to, to the Ukrainian composers um, because the networks had collapsed. And that was just the beginning of a very big initiative for the creators for Ukraine. Enough of me, um, Ludmila Timbal, thank you for being here. And um, thank you for your contribution. 
Thank you so much for inviting us to share our ideas. And I would like to express our gratitude to EXA for organizing such an important webinar. It's really, it, it means a lot to us. Um, so I'd like to begin briefly with a couple of words about what um, NGO UACRR is. It is a um, Ukrainian collective management organization. Uh, we manage music and drama rights. Um, we are a non-governmental organization that is managed and controlled by uh, individual creators and other right holders. Um, the supreme governing body is the General Assembly of our members. Uh, we represent the majority of local right holders and have close to 100 reciprocity agreements with sister societies around the globe. And um, we are also a member of International Confederation of Societies and Authors and Composer, Composers, CISAC. A um, couple of words about operation of NGO UACRR during the wartime. Uh, so we have been operational since the beginning of invasion. Um, in the beginning, we were wor working completely remotely. And thanks to pandemic, we were already equipped to do so. Um, now we are operating in a more hybrid mode. Um, the majority of our staff remained in Ukraine. And um, as you have mentioned, many Ukrainian creators and members of our organization laid down their musical instruments and took the weapons to protect our country. Um, many Ukrainian creators started to volunteer or fundraise the money through organizing concerts, exhibitions, and other artistic um, projects and events in order to help our country and um, spread the truth about the war. Um, also, the um, response of international community has been um, unique and unprecedented. International community of creators demonstrated um, unique solidarity and uh, support. And this is how the International Fund and the Initiative Creators for Ukraine was established. Anna will talk more about this, um, but I can tell that um, uh, the payments that we have managed to, uh, make, to make to Ukrainian creators through this fund, the portion that was directly uh, transferred to our society and then disseminated to our creators made real difference. It was really important, very timely, and very um, narrowly tailored help for Ukrainian creators, and we really appreciate this. Um, we also swiftly distributed uh, the remaining, uh, the incoming royalties from the remaining sources of revenue, like foreign distributions, to help our creators as much as we can. National licensing landscape remains challenging in Ukraine, of course. The economic situation is quite uh, difficult, as you also mentioned. But our creators, they keep on creating and they keep on registering new works. Uh, we have new members joining, so um, they're quite resistant and, um, and brave. Um, so to talk about the needs of cultural sector, and so what we hear from our affiliates and from the uh, professionals in them, uh, creative industries. Uh, of course, the first need is financing uh, because um, uh, it has been reported uh, by the Ministry of Culture of Ukraine recently that um, the losses are estimated uh, in the creative industry overall are estimated to be close to $15 billion. And this is just devastating for the market that hasn't had the chance to recover from pandemic. Um, and of course, uh, it, it needs um, financial support of artistic and cultural projects of Ukrainian creators. Uh, we also believe, believe that it is important to support individual creator, creators and small enterprises in cultural sector because they're they are the backbone of the industry and it's really important to invest in human capital uh, in, in the cultural uh, sphere. Um, this will allow Ukrainian creators both in Ukraine and outside um, to continue their artistic careers 
to retain and develop their skills, um, to sustain themselves during these difficult times, and uh, in this way protect our culture and our identity. And it, it is really important uh, to do so when our culture and, and identity is being attacked. Uh, I think it's also worth mentioning that, again, according to the estimates of um, the Ministry of Culture, um, over uh, close to 20% of um, creative industry professionals are outside of Ukraine now. So uh, it means that the majority of uh, creative industry professionals are in Ukraine. And I'm talking not only about the cultural sector or creators, but the uh, creative industry overall. And um, yeah, the second, the second point that we would like to underline um, is the popularization of Ukrainian culture. Um, uh, there is a need to enable Ukrainian creators to showcase their artistic works in Europe. And um, we feel this demand and uh, Ukrainian creators express their desire to cooperate with the uh, European colleagues and to showcase our culture in the European countries. Um, it can be done through festivals, trade missions and other platforms. Um, and there are lots of instruments and tools to, to enable um, this popularization. And um, we believe also that it can be achieved through establishment of Ukrainian artistic hubs in European countries uh, that would con uh, facilitate continued promotion of Ukrainian culture. Again, it is uh, really important um, while our culture is being attacked and uh, Russia just tries to erase it. So uh, that would be a powerful way to support Ukrainian creators and our culture overall. And um, we would also like to underline that we uh, deeply believe that Ukrainian culture is an integral part of European creative sector. And um, it's just natural for, for Ukrainian creative projects to appear more and more on European creative market. Um, previously, Ukrainian cultural market was a bit more internally oriented, but now uh, we uh, feel the need and desire of the market to become more expert oriented. And uh, we think it, uh, it needs to be supported. So the, the third need that we can um, underline is the more, uh, more cooperation with uh, European creators. Um, again, it's um, the collaborations between Ukrainian creators and European creators and creators around the globe happens really naturally because this is a way of Ukrainian creators to express their gratitude for the support um, of the nations around the globe and to creative communities. And this is also the way of creative communities in other countries to express their solidarity and support to our uh, community. So um, the collaborations happen, uh, but you know, encouraging them more and more, that would be a um, valuable uh, contribution as well. Um, Join, it can be achieved through joint artistic projects. And it's also um, powerful to support Ukrainian creators both emotionally and financially, because eventually through collaborations, uh, Ukrainian creators will gain new audiences, new opportunities. They will um, discover new markets, um, creative markets for themselves. So this is beneficial in both ways. and. Um, we also believe that um, uh, artistic residences and mobility programs and songwriting camps can be a really good um, can be good platforms to to collaborate and share experience between Ukrainian and European creators. And we have several creators who have, uh, for instance, attended the songwriting camps and they returned inspired. Uh, with a new hope, with the new connections and new collaborations in the pipeline. And it's, it's really important in this difficult time for them. Um, we also believe that um, 
there is a need to collaborate through some workshops and to probably raise awareness uh, among Ukrainian creators how to properly manage their rights, to manage their business. So uh, the exchange of experience would be beneficial as well because this would lay the foundation for further um, economic, economic development of the sector. And um, the last need um, that we would like to, to underline is post-recovery, uh, post-war recovery of the Ukrainian cultural sector. Again, um, it needs investment and uh, we will need to create jobs and to boost economic recovery and creative industries will be one of the key drivers of this development because again, um, the human capital uh, is what drives this sector and it does not need really huge investments in the uh, capital or uh, building um, capacities of plants. This, these are the uh, creators that generate new, um, new content and drive the economy. And uh, we also believe that um, training professionals who can restore and preserve uh, the cultural heritage would be uh, really beneficial and sharing uh, best practices and uh, experience uh, would really help. Um, and uh, yeah, the restoration of cultural uh, objects, over 1000 cultural objects have been destroyed in Ukraine. Not all of them can be restored or returned uh, because many of them were uh, stolen uh, by Russian army or Russians, but th that portion that can be restored, it needs, needs uh, a lot of efforts as well. Um, so this is our short overview. I tried to be <laughs> really concise. And um, thank you once again for inviting uh, to this discussion. Um, Slava Ukraini, thank you. Thank you very much. Been some really very um, practical and concise overview, actually, of, of, of the needs and the situation and, and the future. And I think it was um, really helpful to, to hear that from your perspective and from the perspective of the creative industries in Ukraine in general. And um, I agree completely that collaboration and spaces both at home and on a European level are a great way of um, working towards a stronger creative sector for everyone. And one example of such collaboration that has happened recently and is, as far as I understand, ongoing, is that between Mikola Lysenko, who joins us from Kiev today, and Lutz Leukhardt from Germany, who was kind enough to get in touch with EXA and tell us about this quite amazing initiative. And I'd, I'm very happy to have you both here today um, to tell us about your project in your own words. Over to you. Thank you very much for you know, the invitation. Uh, for me, it's a very high level of responsibility and I'm sorry for from I'm sorry for my English because it was very very hard week with a long long trip a long volunteer trip that's why please forgive me something when my words will, will be no not so fast but uh, this item is very important uh, for everybody in Ukraine especially for musicians, because I'm a musician, not uh, not the whole creator um, uh, mass, but especially musicians, because I think that musicians are um, very vulnerable during this war. I will explain my thought because uh, artist, painter, he has, uh, a possibility to create the picture. Musician needs several circumstances to do something. Uh, musician needs auditory, musician needs place, musician needs instrument. 
And now we are living in the time of total loss. If we will think and analyze it, uh, we will see. I am conductor of a big municipal Pope Wind Orchestra, and I know that uh, to work now is uh, very, very hard. Sometimes it's impossible. Sometimes it's, it's impossible because, um, because of those positions. We have uh, the plans of our Ministry of Culture. We have to manage with these plans. We have to uh, organize concerts. We have to provide our activities. But from the other hand, we have no possibility to do it because uh, when we hear the um, air alarm, we have to stop rehearsal. We have to stop the concert. We can't provide a concert in, in a hall if this hall has no bomb shelter. Uh, uh, from my own experience, uh, I am the um, great son of uh, Mykola Lysenko, uh, the founder of Ukrainian class classical music. And there was a Jubilee concert in a Folly Philharmonic Hall and I conducted uh, this concert. And it was only maybe 100 persons in the hall. And I was, first I was uh, uh, badly surprised by this amount. But then uh, the director of this uh, Philharmonic Hall told me, Nicola, just, just uh, <laughs> be happy because it's so much for us. We also, we can't uh, uh, sell more than 150 tickets because only this amount of uh, people can uh, be in the Philharmonic Hall during the concert because this amount of people is the same uh, which is possible to, um, um, to put in the bomb shelter. And uh, we can uh, we can account uh, such a holes with bomb shelter uh, by the hands of I'm sorry by the hands of by by the fingers of one hand. Uh, also, uh, this ruins this these circumstances ruined our financial plans, our possibilities as a. Uh, rehearsals uh, as a uh, trips and now a lot of uh, orchestras a lot of uh, collectives are staying not moving and the question is what we have to do in these circumstances when we did our first uh, concert open air in april it was very high level of risk but the most uh, difficult for me was to organize the concert without uh, any announce, without any um, uh, information about this concert, because it was um, uh, absolutely impossible. Military, uh, militaries told us no announce, no inf uh, the. the it's it's you have uh, you have to do it without any announce because if it will start some uh, air attack, uh, it will be uh, it will be you will <laughs> it will be your fault you know if if some people uh, will die, but uh, thanks to Lord it was without attacks and it was a lot of people around my orchestra during this. This concert. So uh, it means that we have to uh, try to find some other forms of activities. Because musicians, uh, from one hand, musicians need to eat something, uh, need to have uh, some money to, to leave, but first of all, they have. 
to work, to know that uh, uh, there's work, there's work, their professionalism uh, is needful for somebody. It's much more important than everything for musician. And I, I know it by myself. That's why uh, for us is very important to organize those new forums. And my own experience uh, was uh, dealing with a, a German friend, Lutz Lerkraft. Uh, and brilliant song, which I heard from um, the sister of my wife. It it's also was very interesting story when uh, we evacuated our families from Kiev and uh, one volunteer from Germany, it was Lutz Leuchardt, uh, helped to the sister of my wife. And she called me and told, you know, he is very talented. Just, uh, just uh, uh, listen to his song, and I felt with all, all my heart that it's very good composition for an orchestra and rock band, because I had an experience uh, with such an interesting program as a rock symphony in Kiev, and I heard uh, the energy of rock symphony in the music of Lutz. So I decided to organize the common, common uh, creative process. And I think that uh, the result of this, uh, of this uh, process will help to our musicians to feel that they are um, uh, interesting, that they are important, that we can do something even in the circumstances of war. Also, what is very important, uh, not to talk generally, to work in the to work with, a, uh, with individuals, uh, to focus, to find a way how to help uh, to concrete, to specific, to, to, to one or two, three orchestras or musicians, not generally, but very, very, um, uh, definitely, it's very important. Second one uh, important thing is uh, to help Ukrainian musicians with information, information about uh, festivals. As for me, uh, now it's possible to organize a, a concert activity. Uh, it's possible only abroad, only in Europe or something else, and. Uh, this is not so easy as we think about it. Uh, Europe, a little bit tired from a, from a very big amount of Ukrainian uh, musicians. And I uh, know several, uh, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> I know several, um, uh, he, several stories about um, the concerts uh, of Ukrainian musicians in Europe, which were canceled because somebody decided that it's it it will it will not work. It's it's not so interesting. It's dangerous maybe for somebody. So we have uh, really very big need uh, in organization in information. Um, in the uh, uh, in in the uh, uh, image sphere, because uh, European society, American society, uh, has uh, to be strong 
in this friendship uh, war will be not so easy and will be not so fast maybe but we have to understand that the very important part of this war is not only weapons uh, the creative work the music is also very uh, uh, strong weapon and when you support ukrainian musicians you support a struggle of ukraine you support this struggle for humanity for human rights for everything which um support our soldiers now on the on the battlefield so our cultural sphere musician sphere is a better field and we have to understand it absolutely clear so more information more support and more networking network is very important we have uh to be joined we have to communicate uh more and more more and more to be involved in the community in, in the community not uh like now but much more and more every day more uh information webinars seminars common concerts festivals uh, online offline e and i hope it will be absolutely it will be because uh i see everybody of us today here and i feel your energy of support I hope it will be in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, once more, sorry for my English, but I think that you understand the majority of our problems. And uh, I hope that in the future, we will communicate and we will stay very interesting for each other. Thank you very much and Slava Ukraini. Thank you very much, Mikola, for very powerful words and and for the notion of, of music as a weapon for peace. I think that's a very good image and idea. And um one of the things that you talked about very powerfully was um collaboration and creative solidarity and i'd like to invite lutz leukert to tell us about this i think we can call it best practice initiative um in support for ukrainian music and the collaboration between europe and ukraine that's already happening lutz bitte mm, thank you um and thank you for calling it best practice because i'm really really not sure if this is best practice and i tell you why <clears throat> um as Mikola already said, the connection between us established actually in March or April this year. I went to the Ukrainian border with some friends and we transported food there and some um, medicine. And when you are at the Ukrainian border, um, you have the possibility to bring mothers with their kids into your hometown to bring them to a safe place. My hometown is Leipzig, which is a city close to Berlin, more or less close. And um, this is what we did. We brought some women and their kids back to Leipzig. And of course, you don't drop them off in, in your hometown, but you start to help them to find apartments and help them with all the German bureaucracy. And this is what we did. And so um, we, I um, came into contact with um, Tanya, who is part of the family from Mikola and from Luba. She was one of the women we brought here to Leipzig. And after a few days, she told me about Mikola and um, his musical background. And in this moment, I thought, this does not happen by chance. This has to mean something. And um, 
I wrote a song which is called I Am Your Border and I contacted Mikola and asked him if there is any possibility um, how we could somehow publish this song together, which means playing with my band in Leipzig and then adding in any way possible musicians from Kiev to the song. And um, as he told you, he, um, he pretty much liked the idea. And after about seven months of work, we finally managed to um, publish I Am Your Border. It was sometime in the middle of November. And um, actually, I had two motivations be behind this song. The first was to give the people in Ukraine some, um, some strength, some moral strength, so that they feel that they are not alone and that they can feel that music can give power to them. That was the first motivation. And the second was we tried to connect the publication of the song with a donation project for those musicians that you can hear in the song, the Kiev musicians that you can hear in the song. And um, yes, this is what we finally did. And um, when you find the time afterwards, after our meeting today, you can simply open your browser and put into it, um, I am your border.com. And then you will come to the website where you can see a video showing the musicians in Kiev and musicians in Leipzig playing together and some opportunities where people can donate to those musicians and all those background infos and photos from 55 musicians in Kiev and 17 in Leipzig. Um, there is, when I started my little speech, which is really, really not prepared actually, I said that, um, I don't know if our project really is a best practice example, because there is one thing that honestly makes me angry. And it is that it seems to be that after such a long period of war, um, we, the people in the public do not have or the motivation to donate to people from to Ukraine really, really shrank. And um, this is, we can see it in numbers. Um, for example, donation numbers, I will show, share my screen and I'll be finished with my speech in two minutes. I'll share my screen for a second, if this is possible. Okay. What you can see here is the donation project for the musicians in I Am Your Border. And we started three weeks ago and we gained a lot of support from the media here. It was really incredible from Deutschlandfunk, which is a um, really big radio station and other radio stations and, and so on. We got a lot of moral support and um, media support, but if you look at the numbers, funding is extremely hard now and this is um sometimes makes me mad sometimes makes me sad but that is the truth so it's i really wonder what else can i do or could or could we do to um bring more dynamics into donation projects i really do not know now because we did so much but whatever and what you can see here is the actual website when you uh, put, uh, type iamyourborder.com with a video and um, opportunities to donate 
and listen to the song and learn more about the song and learn more about the people down here, all those people who were playing in Kiev. So I do not want to sound bitter because I'm just a private person. Um, and maybe because I am a private person, I expected to get more donation resonance when you put up such a big project. But I still love what we did. And I really, really love that um, we have a connection now to Kiev and to Mikola and to Nuba and to Tanya and to everyone um, who is involved in here. So thank you. Thank you very much, Lutz. And um, you don't sound bitter at all. And I absolutely understand from my perspective um, the sadness that you feel. But I also, I hope that it's not just a question of um, lack of motivation to support the Ukraine. I think all of, all of Europe and all of the world is profoundly affected by the rising energy costs and, and uh, the general costs of living that have come with with the war in the Ukraine. And I still think that your initiative together with Mikola counts absolutely as best practice because what it shows is the solidarity between musicians and the and the non-financial support that's possible and, and the resonance that that can attain. So of course money is an important aspect and would be a reflection of something. And at the same time, the music speaks for itself. My humble opinion um if i'd just like to point you briefly towards the chat nenad uh, bogdanovich from cyprus has just shared with us um another resource about um talking about um sharing music across borders and that's ukrainianlive.org ukrainian scores that's something as far as i know that also already started in march this year and um is a body of, of orchestral and instrumental works uh, by Ukrainian composers that's downloadable for, for orchestras, ensembles, and soloists to play and include in their concerts. And by doing that, by including Ukrainian music in your repertoire, um, if you do that kind of thing, um, obviously uh, performing rights would then flow as revenues to the authors. And that's a very creative and good way of supporting um, Ukrainian solidarity. Um, uh, as we're talking about other initiatives, I'll also briefly mention Creators for Your Ukraine, but I think uh, Anna will tell us more about that in a moment. Unfortunately, Katarina Zavalok is not here today. I shall sing until my land is free is, is another label worth looking at. And artists at risk.org is another resource. Um, especially for Ukrainian artists who are looking for somewhere abroad. Um, without further ado, and we'll have time for questions and discussions at the end, I would like to move on to Juliana Ott, who's joining us from the European Commission, um, to tell us about European support initiatives. Thank you, yes. Juliana. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation and the possibility for this exchange. I think it's very valuable for us. I'm working in the European Commission for the program Creative Europe and I want to give you a really short overview and uh, in, on the general program and then my colleague Alessandro gives you an overview on a specific call for Ukraine. Um, as you might know, uh, Creative Europe is a dedicated program for the audiovisual and cultural sector. Uh, it's a program for, with a period of seven years until 2027. Um, it has two main sub programs. One is the media program and the other one is the culture one. I'm concentrating now on the culture one. And it, it's very important for you to know that also the before the war, Ukraine was an associated country to the program, so it's a partnering country. So Ukrainian organizations and artists can access to all the actions under this uh, culture program. Um, for the budget, for the seven years, for the total program, we have 2.4 billion euros. 
A third of this budget is uh, dedicated to the culture program and to have a concrete figure for 2023, it's around 100 million euros. And uh, two thirds of this 100, uh, uh, 100 million euros is dedicated to one big um, action, it's the cooperation projects. And this is important also because uh, these are projects with at least three partners from three participating countries. So Ukrainian organizations can participate. And in the current or last call for 2022, we had 169 selected projects. And out of these 169 projects, we have 13 projects where we have either a Ukrainian coordinator or a partner. So you say, oh, that's not a lot. The year before we had less. So it's increasing. Um, and so it's also encouraged by us also to uh, th that um, we, we look for U uh, Ukrainian partners. Um, and at the moment, the current call is still open until the 23rd of February. You have to know that this we have annual calls. So if you can't make it until the 23rd of February, uh, you have another possibility uh, the next year. Um, then I wanted also to highlight another action which we started just in October. It's called Culture Moves Europe. It's about individual mobility and it's also open to re Ukrainians. It's for um, so mobility, stay in another country for a cultural project. It's a, between let me, seven and 60 days. It's extremely easy accessible. So the, the bureaucratic burden is very low. Also the financing is very easy. We, we pay lump sum. So the whole uh, administrative burden around it is quite uh, low. And also for Ukrainians that, who can't uh, go abroad physically, we allow also a virtual mobility. And so and it's financed through a daily allowance, which might be very interesting for, for you. And then the same scheme offers as from spring 2023, a residency program, which is uh, will at the moment be fine tuned. So you have to look for it, it could be also interesting. And th those will be residencies between one month and 10 months. Then we have also support to literary translations. And there also under the last call, uh, 2022, we had 35 Ukrainian books recommended to be translated into 15 languages and the other way around to 51 books from 16 languages recommended to be translated into Ukrainian. So there is a link and we support uh, also this. And then, as you might know, uh, the program supports also networks like the European Composer and Songwriter Alliances and or the European Festival Association, Trans Europe Halls and things, uh, organizations like that and platforms and all those networks and platforms have uh, contacts or even partners in the Ukraine. So there is a cooperation also already going on. And then I want to draw your attention also that you have in each um, participating country, you have a creative Europe desk it's a national info point where you can get information and there is still the one in key of working but of course they suffer extremely under the power cuts and so the communication is quite difficult but they get support from the whole network of creative europe desks so if you address and specifically i was told that the polish one the georgian one and from the other neighboring countries help with information, also to Ukrainian. And then perhaps last but not least, uh, because it was underlined as well, 
we have some uh, EU cultural prizes and uh, we have the Music Moves Europe Awards. And in 2021, Aljona Aljona, a Ukrainian rapper, won a prize and also the Public Choice Prize. Then in last year, uh, it was Alina Pash who won a prize. And I remember really the award ceremony, which took place in January, and you already felt the danger of the beginning war. And it was absolutely, uh, I mean, we were all near to tears when she was on her on stage and did her speech and she already felt what's happening. And this year we have another uh, Ukrainian singer who is nominee, it's Jerry Heil. So we will see if she wins the prize. So there is a visibility also to for Ukrainian artists. And it was mentioned by the first speaker as well about cultural heritage. We have also European um, Heritage Awards. And this year, uh, St. Andrew's Church in Kiev won a prize and also the World Vigi I, I always my pronunciation, sorry, Vishivanka Day. It's about the typical Ukrainian shirt was awarded. So it was also showing visibility of Ukrainian culture, which we support. And now I give the floor to Alejandro, who gives now an insight in the specific. And I hope I have been in my time limit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, yes, so um, thank you very much for inviting us here. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to share uh, what the European Union, particularly the program on for dedicated to the contemplative sectors can actually do to address the situation. So further to the uh, already very numerous things of uh, uh, things that uh, the program is doing that Julianne mentioned, we, um, the European Commission and the agency, we decided to um, to launch something that was quite uh, new and unprecedented, which was a specific uh, a specific call targeting the the um, the very grave situation that we uh, are all facing, and particularly the category sectors, you know, I mean in Ukraine, and um, so and so five million euros were year marked for a call for proposals exclusively uh, targeted the situation in Ukraine. This was never done before. We had in the past sometimes, you know, specific ad hoc actions targeting a, a, a region, like for instance, we have a dedicated uh, call for the Western Balkans a couple of years ago, but never, and the Creative Euro support was given to one single country, just to because the program covers a vast array of countries going in the past up to 40. And obviously, uh, the European added value was always understood as a kind of a regional or pan-European uh, dimension. So that is why the calls were devised the way they were. And um, so this is what makes uh, a little bit this call unique. Um, the second thing that actually makes it uh, quite exceptional is the way it has been devised. So uh, the the so the program has the program the this call for proposals aims to um, address three specific objectives that were uh, already mentioned in the previous interventions. Uh, so the first one, uh, the idea was to support the uh, the creative sector, so meaning the artists uh, and the professionals to showcase the art and works uh, in Ukraine in the participating countries. The idea of being able to was to respond to the increasing demand uh, that uh, uh, very unfortunately due to the war was brought into the um, uh, Ukrainian culture. And, uh, and that would actually help us so fight the, uh, the narrative uh, that uh, the Ukrainian culture does not exist. The Ukrainian language, does, you know, I mean, uh, it's not a language, and that the country it's just something that was created uh, very recently by the Russians in the 20th century. So um, we all know that all of this is this false, is not accurate. Uh, but uh, very unfortunately, uh, those are ideas that have been uh, quite uh, shared uh, in, in, in the last in the last months. So uh, by showcasing, uh, you know, Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian artists, um, 
we could actually contribute to uh, fight the uh, this cultural war that is also happening at the same time as the real one that we have in the front lines. So that was the objective number one for these. We expect to sign one contract uh, worth of uh, two uh, million euros of uh, EU contribution. And second one was uh, the um, help uh, address the social impact that the war is having uh, in, in, in Ukraine and in the wider region particularly when it comes to providing assistance to the uh, Ukrainians displaced by the war, uh, be it internally displaced in Ukraine or internationally displaced in the uh, surrounding countries. So that obviously is how to make, uh, you know, these people um, a little bit uh, better if, if we can, uh, if we can say such a thing uh through uh, cultural means so for these uh, uh two million euros were earmarked uh, for uh, one contract um, to promote that uh, over the um, participate i mean in the wider region that's what i mean and then the third objective was to start preparing for the recovery we realized that uh, the reconstruction of the cultural and creative sector has to start now Obviously, we are not talking about the reconstruction of sites, just to, that might be the first thing that comes to mind after a war or during the war. The idea is to start doing the soft part of thinking, strategizing, and um, uh, that needs to be done uh, in order for these steps, uh, you know, the more concrete and literally concrete uh, efforts um, to be deployed later on and we want these to be a little bit the first cornerstone of the uh, future uh eu action and investment on uh, on all of the on on, on the um, uh, i mean that that's gonna come later on in the view of the accession of uh, i mean ukraine becoming a new accession country so the goal as such has been closed in two weeks ago but what is it, why I'm talking about it now is because for the first two objectives, uh, there will be 70% uh, of these 2 million euros each, so 70% of the 4 million in total covering objective one and objective two, which is the uh, direct uh, addressing direct consequences of the war in the participating countries will be uh, spent through a cascading grant mechanism. This means that there will be at least uh, two calls for proposals each year that will be implemented uh, by the winning consortia, one on the mobility aspects and the other one on the um, uh, display, you know, providing assistance to displaced people. And, uh, and those will be micro grants. So the idea would be that uh, we can reach uh, finance a minimum, I would say between 50 or 100 projects that would be worth between 30 and 60,000 euros of EU contribution. So the, 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 the smaller the EU grant um, and most likely will be quite micro because we understood uh, as talking to our stakeholders that there is a need for very um, small support. We could even have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grantees over the coming years. So the, uh, there will be a lot of opportunities for financing uh, small or even nano projects uh, uh, by very small organizations, even uh, possibly individuals. Uh, and that will be uh, starting already in 2023. The idea obviously will be that, uh, that's the reason why we're doing that, is that these mini calls uh, we call them, um, will be quite flexible, adjusting to the situation, you know, as it goes on the ground, and, uh, and very easy to respond to. So it will be uh, less, uh, let's say, bureaucratic uh, or um, cumbersome, let's say, we can say that, being a little bit self-critic with the way the European Union funding works. And uh, so that's to make it more agile, and relevant to the needs of the applicants themselves. 
So uh, what I mean is that we have for the time being received 45 applications, you know, covering, you know, these three objectives. And then the selection is ongoing. So uh, we, are, uh, we are aiming at uh, publishing the results in February, which will mean that around that date, we will already have a little bit of a, of a view, of an idea about when, uh, I mean, who will be launching these calls and when this could actually happen. Our priority is to make possible that the first calls, one for the you know, one per objective, can be launched as soon as possible, ideally in the first semester of 2023, but then uh, we have to see how, how far we can go. So that's my point. I mean, uh, I, you can ask uh, questions later I, because this is something that maybe you were a little bit less familiar with. I mean, it's a very kind of uh, unusual, at least for us, mechanism. So if you have questions later on, I'm gonna happy to respond to them. Thank you very much, Alejandro, for a really helpful overview and, and to Juliana for the, for the background. Um, from the European side and the support mechanisms, it was really good to hear about how these calls um, are working, because I think for some people who work within the sector, it wasn't completely clear what was going to happen with these quite large funding projects, and it makes complete sense to really help people on the ground, like you said, with these nano and micro projects. I think that maybe we as EXA can also have a role in helping uh, Ukrainian artists in future like navigate the application process, because even Thank if you. it's simple for people who've done these things before, it might not be simple for first time participants. Anna, I promised you we would have time and we do. Um, oh. Very, very pleased to welcome you here today, Anna Klimczak from Sykes. Floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I represent Sykes. Uh, this is Polish Authors and Composers Society. And I'm very glad that I could hear all the ideas that you mentioned and all the programs that are ongoing and are about to happen because uh, in my short presentation, I would like to share with you what has already been done in, in Poland and in Europe uh, with Creators for Ukraine uh, program. And I would also like to share some ideas we have for next year. Uh, that means we are definitely interested in applying for this micro grants that Alejandro just mentioned. Uh, and I, I have prepared a, a short presentation so, but just to guide you, can you see my screen now? No, not yet. Yes, yes, we can. Again? Great. So, sorry. Creators for Ukraine uh, was the program that uh, we started with other uh, authors and composers uh, organizations from all over the world, basically, we started to discuss it just right after the full-scale full invasion of Russia. Uh, and uh, uh, the response and mobilization of um, outer societies uh, was very strong uh, from the beginning. Uh, we decided to create an emergency fund for Ukrainian creators. And also we are thinking how, what we can do to increase uh, royalties for Ukrainian creators. We were well, well aware that they could not give concerts in Ukraine. So we were thinking about uh, what to do to increase online royalties and also how to uh, manifest our solidarity in political context. Uh, we wanted to make a strong appeal that creators are against war and we definitely support Ukrainian creative community. Uh, so the program started in, in late March, early April, uh, and uh, we have achieved a lot so far. Quite a big amount of money was uh, gathered, collected, and then divided. A uh, big part of this, this uh, founding went to uh, Ukraine, and Ludmila mentioned it at the beginning. Um, uh, other sums were directed to 
create uh, to to organizations um, of uh, creators and authors and composers in the countries that received um, war refugees from Ukraine for them to be able to to help to uh, the creative community to the families um, many times uh, there were wives and and children and also students of artistic schools that were forced to leave uh, Ukraine and uh, try to live abroad. Um, CSAC was the head organization of the program. Zaix also was kind of, you know, inspiring the whole process. Many organizations contributed. I'm sure that, well, we, we were aware, aware that individual help is uh, of great importance and of great value, but organizations have important role to play uh, to organize structures uh, of this help and to maintain uh, this help as long as it's needed. Um, we also, well, CSAC also uh, organized an um, action of signing a petition. Uh, many artists contributed with their signatures and the petition was sent uh, to the governments um, to make a, a clear call that we are against war. And also in this digital context, Songs for Ukraine uh, was, um, was started um, by Artisius, this is a Hungarian organization. Uh, and uh, Artisius' idea was to gather Ukrainian songs online and make a playlist to uh, help to promote Ukrainian music and also to increase royalties. Um, this is, uh, you, you can see how the money was distributed. As you see, the, the blue line is uh, the money that went directly to Ukrainian creators that were in Ukraine. Uh, Anna, Anna, just to surely interrupt you. Uh, uh, we don't see your slides changing, uh, so I don't know if, if something might be stuck. Oh, sorry. And now? Let's see. Oh. Uh, no, it still seems to be stuck on the first slide. Uh, maybe what you could try is to stop sharing the screen and then start it again. Okay, I will try. Good to, good, good to, say. Good to know. Okay, can you see it now? Uh, we still just see your first slide. Mm. This is not good. And then maybe you can scroll through the windows. Of, yep, now it's yeah. open. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So here you can see how the money was distributed. Sorry for this. <laughs> Mm, so uh, big, a uh, big part of the fund went to Poland. So we felt responsibility to distribute it uh, in a way that the money could reach a creative community because um, the scale of help was enormous, but we wanted to focus on creative community and their families. Uh, and also other countries that um, received money to organize help on their territory. And now um, to show you scale of activities in Poland, uh, we, uh, we were inspiring to create supporting programs that will go directly to artists. Uh, Zaix, my organization, uh, gave the biggest donation. Uh, and also we decided to use our structures like the House of Creative Work in uh, next to Warsaw to host um, uh, war refugees from uh, at first, all Ukrainians coming to Poland, but then we, we slowly uh, focused on artistic community um, with, uh, with Zaik's money and money from Creators for Ukraine. Uh, we founded individual allowances uh, for Ukrainian artists in Poland uh, and then grants for um, cultural events and artistic projects and artistic educations. A little bit what we tried to do a little bit what Alejandro uh, commented that we wanted to give uh, small scale grants only on a smaller scale, of course, on a scale of uh, outer society. Uh, and uh, we delivered humanitarian aid for artists in Ukraine. The walkie talkies uh, you mentioned at the beginning, uh, also medicine, blankets, uh, shoes, 
Um, we organized several convoys, small scale convoys um, that went directly to Ukraine. Uh, we, we wanted the program to be easy to apply for, and that's why we, uh, we started online forms in Polish and Ukrainian language. And was, what was very important to me is to uh, gather Ukrainian specialists that were operating the found in Zaix. And we still have them on board. Um, without this uh, linguistic barrier, uh, we, we feel it, uh, it was much easier to operate and to reach people that are in need. Uh, so this is how we managed to build structures um, that were helping. And now in the second phase, when the money from the first uh, fundraising are practically over and we are running a second round of uh, fundraising, waiting for new support, new financial support, uh, we try to uh, keep an open mind about what we can do, uh, not only in um, financial way, but how we can support Ukrainian artistic community in Poland by involving them in artistic life of our country. And uh, I would like to share four ideas, um, mostly to organizations, to organizations like Zaix, but also to other organizations that are operating in fields of culture that they can do to help Ukrainian artists, even if they don't have uh, big money for this, or even if they don't have extra money at all. Um, and I will, uh, I will repeat a little bit ideas of um, that already uh, that already were mentioned here. That's and I'm very optimistic about it because it uh, it assures me that we are thinking in the same direction. Uh, make a guide of opportunities for individual creators because they can be lost. Uh, they they have chances to apply for support, but there are many possibilities. Uh, our organizations can be um, like a guide here, uh, can give a helping hand uh, to. Um, for uh, for Ukrainian artists to feel more oriented in this uh, landscape. Uh, we can also, we would be able next year to apply for grants. Um, Alejandro mentioned, so to obtain money from outside of our organization. Uh, Zaix is thinking about artistic residences program and mentoring program for Ukrainian artists. Uh, because this way of help would, um, would give them shelter out of Ukraine in a safe country and would also integrate them more with artistic community in Poland and in other European countries. But also every time we organize some creating camp or other creative event, we want to make sure that Ukrainian artists are, are well, well informed about it and they can apply and uh, they can participate. And the final, uh, the final thing that we can do is facilitate networking, uh, use our contacts, share information, and do, do very simple things that, that are really important uh, for artistic creative community uh, in Poland or, or where, wherever they are at the moment. So that was, that was it. Thank you. I will stop sharing. I can see you now, uh, and I'm. I, I would like to thank you very much that I could share what we achieved so far, and I'm very willing to hear the discussion because I've already seen on chat uh, exchange of links, and this is exactly what I meant in my final slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. Um again for a really great overview of, of what you've achieved um, and Lutz maybe it's encouraging to you to see that uh, you know an organization like Zaigs did manage um, to put together over 230,000 euros in a time where no one's um, really um, you know financially so well off but it's a question of solidarity and of course Poland has a has a great tradition of um, social solidarity um, which has really come to light in all of this. And I think also a very close relationship to the Ukraine. As far as I understand, there were 3 million Ukrainians living in Poland before the beginning of the war. And um, 
yeah and in that case Poland's really been an incredible um, passage I think and hub for not just Ukrainian artists but civil society in general. Um, I'd like to open the floor and I'd like to encourage all of you, um, whether it's a question to anyone specific or a point you'd like to make or an initiative that you've heard about that hasn't been discussed here or you have more to say about, please, uh, the floor is yours. If you could use the raise hand function or turn your cameras on and just show me that you'd like to speak. Yes, Alessandra. Hello, everyone. I'm not sure if you can hear me correctly. I'm joining from the airport, so I'll try to be very brief. Um, so I'm here uh, from the Association of European Conservatories, and we recently launched an initiative that we have called AC for Ukraine, and it's directed to help uh, Ukrainian higher music education institutions, um, and specifically in helping them uh, sort of survive the winter and helping them get generators uh, and be autonomous uh, from an electricity standpoint. Um, so this is mainly directed to help three of our institutions in Kharkiv, Odessa, and in Kyiv. Um, and I mean, I will try to share the links also in the chat. Um, and if not, please uh, feel free to, to contact me directly. Thank you, Mahil. Yeah. Um, feel free to contact me if you want to learn more. But yeah, just uh, one more initiative on our side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alessandra, and thank you for joining us from the airport. Um, is that something that's already launched? So yeah, it, it was launched on last Friday, uh, very late, and we, we've tried now, we're, we're, we're going to do our best to promote it before Christmas. So. Um, but it's sort of a good time as well, like if people want to just make sure to donate something or just to make it, instead of doing so many Christmas gifts, you know, just like donate something to, you know. That, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> Great. Thank you. So, Mikola and um, anyone else who's joining us from, from the Ukraine, I think that's something that's really worth looking um, at. If I can. Um... Yes, Hi everybody, I'm very happy to be in this community and thanks for so many interesting information. I'm a musician uh, uh, from Ukraine and I'm based now between Ukraine and Poland. And uh, the initiatives, are uh, we have a small things which we're doing um, besides of performing the world music, uh, Ukrainian folk music too. We have a small initiative um, called Music Up. And we were we were doing uh, projects to educate musicians, to teach English language, to teach management and marketing, and then to teach things about royalties. And here would be very interesting um, if we could cooperate in the future with, with the Zaix, because many musicians from Ukraine are now in Poland. And uh, the small project we are doing within the British UK in UA season, which might have been something else, but because of war, it totally changed. So we will be doing the um, uh, residency, uh, which will be actually not in Ukraine, but will be in Poland and online for dancers and musicians. So we'll be creating the experimental du duos and trios, combining music and, um, and folk Ukrainian music and dance and modern dance. And uh, this, is, this is something small we are doing, but we are happy to cooperate in the future projects. Um, what um, what what is connected to the education of musicians in the management field and also in the mental health, which is now a really important topic for every every musicians. And um, if you will be interested in cooperation, I will put my contacts into the chat. And we are happy to implement not a huge but a, but a small local projects. Uh, and we would be would be happy. We have a. Um, experience in, in cooperation UK, Poland and Germany but also will be happy to cooperate with other countries and especially if you're working with the folk music with the world music ex experiments in that field also me personally would be happy to cooperate thank you thank you Anastasia please definitely share your links or contact details in the chat and 
I think in the office we're going to be saving the chat and then sharing all of these links and information, right? Definitely, Thank yes. You very much. Great. Anyone else? Yeah, if, if possible, I would also uh, share a couple of words with you. First of all, um, my name is Mariana Bondarenko and I work for Ukrainian Institute. So we promote Ukrainian culture abroad. And I'm really more than happy to be here with you. And thank you so much for everything what you're doing now, because it's really enormous help you're providing for Ukrainian cultural sector, because of course, definitely on the political level, it's a very impo important to support Ukraine, but actually the cultural sector exactly now needs a lot of support because um, nowadays, so basically we have uh, such um, a uh, view that part of Ukrainian uh, music scene is now migrated to e European uh, countries. Uh, more or less, they have some support there, but those who are here in Ukraine, uh, they really need uh, some help because, uh, first of all, the uh, financial one, so basically what we are now trying to do in Ukrainian Institute is provide this dialogue and platform for communication and combination of uh, international organization with uh, Ukrainian um, artists. So basically the cultural sector. So I will be really more than happy to get all your inputs. Thus we can share it with uh, Ukrainian musicians. Um, thank you so much in advance. So basically I personally work for uh, jazz programs and we work a lot with Europe Jazz Network and they are also spreading a lot of information uh, about our artists. So if there are any other platforms where we can be helpful for you and share our information on Ukrainian artists, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be more than happy and sorry I'm talking to you from complete darkness. It's just because of the electricity <laughs> shutdown at the very moment. So, but still, I'm really very, very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mariana, and thank you for using your energy to join us today, quite literally, really. Thank you. And um, yeah, great to know about your organization. And I'm sure that we, many of us will be in touch and sharing links and information. May I invite any other questions or comments? Well, Alejandro, did you want to say anything more about the about the upcoming projects or were you just offering to answer questions? No, I, I, no, 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 I think it would be better if the uh... Uh, no, no, it was just a hoping to, to to be able to respond to questions. But uh, no, I think I said uh, everything. I just to mention in the chat that we expect the results to be announced on February. So starting February, you will be able to see who's the coordinator that was likely will be launching the calls and then already kind of checking <laughs> when the uh, uh, when this will be done, obviously, we will do uh, um, a communication campaign. So then uh, I invite you to follow the Creative Europe social media accounts because the information will be distributed there. Great. Yes, then we have some time um, until that's here. And I think it's going to be a very useful initiative, uh, especially for people in the Ukraine and Ukrainian artists in the enforced diaspora. Um, would anyone else like to ask or share anything with us? Okay. Then I'd just like to um, take this opportunity to say thank you naturally to Yudmila, to Mikola, to Lutz, to Juliana and Alejandro and to Anna for, for contributing um, not just your experiences, but also some very, very useful information about what's happening and what's needed. I do believe that the will is there. And I think that we in the creative and cultural sector are particularly strong in um, moral and uh, emotional solidarity. 
and thank God there are tools for the financial support that's needed. But um, I think that this, um, the value of art and culture and music that connects us, that we can all feel here today, is uh, strengthening for all of us. And I hope that that is um, resonating into the Ukraine for those of you who are there. Um, thank you for being here. I think I'd like to pass the word to Mahir to, to wind up. And I'd just like to welcome you all to being in touch with EXO if you have any other questions or follow-ups to any of this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, fully agree with your words, uh, Sarah. Uh, many thanks to, to all the speakers for these, uh, for these important discussions, especially those connecting from Ukraine in these, in these difficult circumstances. And uh, thanks a lot uh, to you, Sarah, for, for being great moderator. Um, and indeed, uh, we will also be back with a new capacity triangle uh, in February um, about the importance of metadata. We will communicate about that uh, uh, shortly. Uh, but for now, uh, uh, thanks to everyone and we hope to see you soon. Yes, take care, all, all best to all and especially to those of you who are where you are. Slava Ukraina. Thank you. <laughs>